Hi, I'm Dan Bennett, reviews editor for Focus Magazine, and I'm here today at the Firo Robot World Cup at the At Bristol Science Centre. We're going to go track down some of the teams and ask them about their robots and how they plan to win this year's World Cup. I'm with the Snowbots team from the University of Manitoba in Canada and I'm here with their robot Jennifer. Uh, can you tell me a bit about Jennifer and how she's going to be competing the events today? Well, Jennifer is just a, an off-the-shelf research robot built by a company from South Korea. Okay. Uh, we're from a, the Department of Computer Science at the University of Manitoba, so we're not mechanical engineers or electronics engineers, we write software. Right. So from our perspective, it's much easier to just buy an off-the-shelf robot that we can write all the software on. And these robots are great for that. Everything on them is open source. They run a Linux operating system. The manufacturer provides all the source code for their own drivers stuff, so we can hack the robot and get it to do exactly what we want it to do. And so for this robot, for the competitions, we've modified it a little bit. We've yeah. given it these nice little gripper hands. So those aren't off the shelf, are they? Well, they're, it's an off the shelf add-on. You can It's not a standard part of the robot. Mm -hmm. And that's going to give us a hand with literally a hand, no pun intended, um, for the weightlifting and the basketball events. In weightlifting, the robot has to be able to pick up a bar loaded with CDs or DVDs, carry it at waist height for 50 centimeters, and then lift it up over its head. Yeah. And having a hand that we can grab firmly on the bar with and then relax the grip when we're going up so the bar will actually roll down into the palm of the hand mm -hmm. is a huge advantage over just having a fixed hook or a claw. Yeah. And the other thing we've changed from, we used one of these robots in Taiwan last year, but we've changed the feet a little bit. We've added, oh dear, this one's delaminating a little bit, but we've added rubber grippers to the bottoms of the feet, so to, just to give it a little bit more traction. Mm -hmm. And the feet actually have sensors inside them, so we know when the robot's foot is actually landed on the ground or not. And so it'll tell us where the pressure points are on the foot. So for the weightlifting, again, if it's you know, tipping over forward, we'll get a lot of high pressure on the toes, so we can lean the robot back more, try to get pressure on the heels again. And that's all programmed so it's autonomous, so yes. when it senses that change in pressure, it corrects it yeah. itself. We have to tell the robot you know, what sensors to monitor and how to adjust itself when it reads something that isn't right. So and, and we have to tell it it's software, and then for the competitions, we plug in a computer, hit the go button, and then we have to unplug everything, and we can't manipulate the robot at all beyond that point. It's completely on its own, mm -hmm. so it has to look around the world. It's got a little web camera in between the, the blue eyes right there. So it has to look around and identify objects in the world that it's interested in, a weightlifting bar, a, a marker at the end of its lane for the sprint, the line on the ground for the marathon. And we have to program it to tell it how to look for those things, how to identify them, filter out noise. You know, is, we see a red thing on the ground, well, is that a red ball or is that someone's shoe? And we have to, it has to know the difference on its own. We're not allowed to you know, manipulate it with our computers at all. So obviously you want to win. Uh, we do, yes. <laughs> and that's great for the competition. But how does, from your point of view, from learning how to program that kind of software, what kind of applications will that have you know, outside of the competition? Well, humanoid robotics, especially in Asian countries, is a huge phenomenon. Uh, one of my supervisors described humanoid robotics as being the Asian equivalent of the Apollo project in America. The, you know, all these countries are competing with each other to try to be the first to reach every milestone, it's like the Soviets and the Americans in the space race. And in order for humanoid robots to be useful in general society, you know, if we want to have a, ro a robotic firefighter that we can send into a burning building to try to save people, rather than risking the life of a human firefighter, robots have to be able to navigate very, very uneven terrain. They have to be able to identify, you know, is that shape on the ground, is that a human that's in distress, or is that just a pile of rubble? And firefighting is probably the ideal application for humanoid robotics, because it's such a dangerous environment. 
But through the last few centuries, we've developed enough tools and equipment for firefighting that if we have a humanoid robot, it can use the tools we already have. Mm. So it, it can sit in one of the standard seats in a firefighter pumper truck. We don't need to build a new truck and distribute that. It can pick up a hose or a fire extinguisher and use it the same way a human would. And the whole idea behind this competition is to try to take baby steps towards that kind of a much larger goal. So the weightlifting, and if you imagine a robot carrying a, an injured person out of a building, it's the same idea as carrying a, a bar loaded with weights. The robot center of gravity is off where it normally would be. So it has to adjust its gait and its posture to stay balanced. You don't want to drop people. Um, and just being able to look around your environment and identify objects that you need to manipulate and manipulate them autonomously. And you mentioned that you've been here in previous years. Yes. Have you seen the kind of the competition come along each year? Is it, is it um, harder and this harder? This is actually only my second year coming. Our university has been going to FIRA since it started. Uh, one of our professors at the university is on the, the board of directors for the event. So we've been going to the event for a very long time and just looking at the progress that we've made. We've got all of our old robots in the lab still. We started off with very, very low quality and expensive robots. Um, some of the earliest ones we used at FIRA actually used a mobile phone for the camera and the processor because that was just the cheapest hardware we could find but it had everything we needed. It had gyroscopes so we could detect balance and rotation. It had a camera were built in and we could you know, crack the case open, solder some extra wires in and have the phone tell the motors where to go. And, and we compare that with you know, 10 years later, we have you know, this robot which is fantastic quality. It, we came in second place in the marathon with it last year. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the only team that beat us was uh, from Plymouth in <laughs> England, so th they have a bit of a home crowd advantage this year, but we're hoping to give them a run for their money. <laughs> Well, great, thanks, and wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Good luck. I'm with uh, Team TKU from the Robot World Cup. Uh, can you tell us about your robot and the university you've come from today? Uh, this is our middle-sized robot. Okay. And uh, we are come from Taiwan and we are Tankang University. Okay. Yeah. And um, so what, what event is this robot for? Uh, this is for few robot sort. Okay, event. so you play yeah. with a, a football on yeah. a pitch like this. Yeah. What kind of size is the ball? Uh, it's a... Uh, so does it go in here? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, can, you, can you tell us uh, how yeah. it works? Like it's a ball. Ah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so it fits in here and drives around. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about how it works, how it sees the Okay. Pitch? And uh, it can use this lens to see the ball mm -hmm. and uh, use the other circuit board to control the wheel. Okay. to move around. Yeah. And is it autonomous? Uh, yeah, it's autonomous. So it doesn't, doesn't connect to any of the laptops here? Uh, it can connect the information to, to, to the other side, the other computer. Yeah. But the computation is done, it done inside. inside of the robot. Yeah. So this, so this very interesting looking cube. That's the, that's a camera here, is it? Yeah, it's a camera, and it's pointing up to point what? up to the omnidirectional mirror, and you can see all around the, the field. Okay, and yeah. these 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 do move quite quickly, don't they? They they go around the pitch quite fast. Uh, you mean the robot? Mm, how far how fast do they go? Uh, it's about thirty meters per second. Okay. Yeah. And then what kind of applications would this robot have uh, in business or in... Uh, maybe some home yeah. robot or tra trailer or... Oh, so like in a yeah, warehouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can use it to, to move around um, technology. Okay, well, thanks very much for your time. Yeah, hope thank you, you. Hope you win. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Peter from the Plymouth Humanoids today. Uh, so Peter, tell us about your robot and the event it's entering. Our robot here is, um, at the moment, he's the current um, world champion and world record holder at both the sprint and the marathon event um, here at the FIRA Robo World Cup. So he's a, he's a little Mo Farah bot, is he? He's, he's a Mo Farah and a bit of a Usain Bolt as well at the same time. <laughs> so um, what, 
what uh, parts of this bot are sort of specially tuned towards running and sprinting and can you tell us a little, about, little bit about its guts as well? I can do, yes. I, th I think the most obvious thing that you can see here is probably the shoes. <laughs> yeah, so we're one good. of the only robots to have shoes uh, and this gives us a bit of a key advantage because right. it stops, it increases the friction and stops us slipping. Um, so it also allows us in the marathon event that can be held outdoors to have a slight advantage over an uneven surface. So that's one of our innovative designs we have at Plymouth University. Um, another key aspect is the processor we use. So inside here we have something called a beagle board, which is um, a sort of similar process you might find in a, uh, a mobile phone or in a touchscreen tablet. And these are changing every year. So this is the main thing that drives the design of our body. Uh, and our body is made of perspex that is laser cut out. And then we have a rapid prototype head here. And inside the head, you can see there's a a webcam inside here All right. and then on the back of here we also have a small little processor and this one controls 20 motors um, 10 in the legs um, three in the, each arm and one in the head just at the back here and he'll um, he'll run completely autonomously is that right he does yes once a referee blows his whistle you press a button and that's it there's totally autonomous and will he will he be communicating to another a laptop somewhere will be monitoring or will you just be he's just autonomous everything is done on board here on the processor okay. so we will take the webcam and we'll take a picture 30 times a second and then there will be the information of the picture such as the colour, the shape or a line to follow will be processed by uh, processed on this processor here mm -hmm. then the information will be sent to the back um, to a small processor here and then that information is relayed to each of the motors to tell it how, how much to turn and what speed it needs to turn at. So for the marathon what kind of distance and what kind of track is it, will he be running on? At the moment the distance is 84 metres um, depending on the weather it's usually held outdoors <laughs> so they try and make it difficult so that the lighting conditions are variable so it makes it quite difficult for the robots to adjust to different lighting conditions and also outdoors you get a slightly uneven surface yeah. so it makes it difficult for the robots. And we've got some other bots behind us here. Um, you'll be entering the sprint and the marathon with this robot here. What we other will, events yes. like, are you going to be contending We're in? hoping to play in the, we've got a United football team and also a five-a-side. So, but it's the first year that we've sort of moving away from some of the Olympic style events and trying to go into robot football as well. Um, so that's a bit of a development year for us, but we're hoping to do quite well in the robot football as well. Great. Well, we wish you the best of luck and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hi, I'm here with Team Panther from Bristol University. Uh, so can you tell me about your robot and what events you're here to enter today? Okay, well we're here competing for the first time and we're hoping to enter into the marathon event which is this Saturday. And that's uh, a race over, is it 80 metres? It's over 42 metres, which meters. is exactly 1,000 for the real marathon. <laughs> so are you, you hoping for first place? Uh, not quite. Uh, we're gonna st <laughs> we're gonna start just hoping to finish the race first. But uh, if we could do well, that, that would be great. <laughs> um, and looking at your bot, what um, special sort of bits have you got that are gonna give you a competitive edge? I mean, this 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 sort of camera setup looks quite unique. Um, well, we've got this mirror on top, so instead of having another motor which would add to the weight of a robot, what we've done is sort of expand how far the uh, robot can see by stretching uh, the field of view. Oh, I see. Um, we've also got this uh, gripper system on the front, uh, uh, so we can expand uh, in future performances uh, into the, ba the uh, basketball discipline, mm -hmm. and that's for gripping the ping pong ball, and that's actuated by this uh, cable at the back here. Right. And so, like at the moment, we've come in while you're sweeping the robot. What sort of things are you adjusting to make sure you can get to the end of the finishing line? At the moment, a lot of our work is focusing on how the robot's walking, uh, mostly on the balance. So, uh, a recent addition that we've included in the robot is this uh, sensor package here, mm -hmm. which has a, a gyroscope, accelerometer, and magnetometer inbuilt in it. So, from that, we can get the uh, exact orienta orientation of the body. So, we've been working on a feedback systems to improve balance and generally tuning the gate. 
And uh, if, if it, we've seen a lot of crashes upstairs with other robots, has it got a self-writing mechanism? It does. Um, <laughs> currently not working because we've been fiddling around with it. Um, the weight distribution is slightly off what it was, oh. so it doesn't get up anymore, but we're hoping <laughs> to fix that shortly. And then, I'm right saying this is, again, it's another purely autonomous bot. Once you set it going, it, it, is, it, is all the comp computation done inside here? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've got one computer here, uh, which is a beagle board, so it's a pretty much a full computer, quite low power, but it runs an operating system. And we've got this controller board here, which controls all the motors. Um, so it's totally autonomous. Uh, we basically turn it on, and then there's a push button which says go, and okay. then it will stand up and hopefully follow a line. Great, well, wish you the best of luck. Good luck with the marathon, and thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much.